Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, we're gonna talk about JavaScript alert, confirm, and prompt message pop-up boxes. Now, if you don't know what those are, I'm gonna go into pretty good detail here in this video, show you how to implement them with code samples, and uh, they each serve a different purpose, so tell you kind of how to and when you should be using those uh, different pop-up message boxes. So if that's something you're interested in learning, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. We're gonna be working with my website, tonys.surf, and this is really just like a, a template website. There's not much going on here. Um, but what I do have here in this terminal window, I'm logged into the server that's hosting this website. And you can see if I do an LS here, uh, here is our index.html file. So let's open up the index.html file and you can see, you know, your standard HTML setup. So you have your header, a bunch of elements, your body, same thing, all the content that's making up this page. But what I want to do just to demonstrate what a JavaScript alert is right here, very bottom of the body, last line, let's paste in some code here, uh, a script tag. Okay. Between the script tag, we're going to call the JavaScript alert built in alert function. And we're gonna pass into that function, welcome to my website, okay? So what we would expect to see when we save this file and we refresh the page is an alert that pops up in your browser that says, welcome to my website. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll refresh the page here. And just like we expect it, welcome to my website with an okay button. Okay, and just to show you that this is pretty flexible, um, if you wanted to add a new line, multiple line message that pops up, you can do, uh, backslash n for new line and then say something like enjoy, right? Uh, we'll see what that looks like. See if we actually get that second line and we do. Welcome to my website, enjoy. And you can make this fairly uh, decorative, I guess, with let's just show you how we can add an emoji guy here with his tongue sticking out. Uh, that should work for us too. So we'll save that change, refresh the page and we see the emoji pop up there as well. Now this, this is okay. I mean, I don't know. I can't really think of too many use cases for this um, unless you want to like prompt the user when they first visit your website, but maybe when they click on a button might make more sense. So let's find the go to YouTube button up here and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what this does. It just links to my YouTube channel like that. Um, but we can, with the on click attribute, uh, change that behavior. So we can do, say on click for this particular button, right? So uh, if I'm not being explicit here, uh, this is the button that corresponds to this up here in the, the web page. We'll click out of that. Um, and when you click on that button, we want to call the JavaScript alert function. So alert, and we'll say something like, um, are you sure? Are you sure like are you sure you want to go to youtube and notice here how i'm using double quotes on the outside and then single quotes for the actual message uh inside the alert function um if you if you use consistently single quotes or double quotes you'll it, it won't work uh so make sure you're paying attention to your quotes so let's save that and see if this works so we'll refresh the page click on the go to youtube button and it says are you sure we only have one option let's click on okay and that should allow us to pass on to YouTube here. Okay, cool. So um, the thing about that though, is that what if you want to give the user the option to not go to YouTube? We're gonna have to write some logic, some JavaScript logic to prevent that from happening, okay? So instead of calling the JavaScript alert function directly within, within the on click, let's define a function um, called, I don't know, checker. Okay. And let's, well, we're going to call the function checker here, but we have to define it down below where we were before. So at the very bottom, and just to save us some time, I'm going to, uh, copy and paste this. I'll walk you through it. Don't worry. Um, here is our checker function. Okay. So between here and here is the function content. Okay. The function's called checker we create a variable called result and it's going to do the same pop-up that we did before confirm. Are you sure? And then depending on what button the user clicks, okay, we're using a confirm this time, not an alert, depending on what button the user clicks, if that is, if the user clicks the negative button, then we're going to prevent the default action from happening, which is following the link to YouTube. If this block does not execute, 
then we're gonna go ahead and go to YouTube, which means that the user clicked on the positive answer. Uh, in this case, I believe it's okay. So let's test that out. Again, we have a function called checker down here defined and up top on the on click. When somebody clicks on go to YouTube, the on click is gonna execute that function. Okay, so let's save that. We will refresh the page and now let's click go to YouTube. Now, instead of just seeing an okay button, we see an okay button and a cancel button. So if we click on the okay button, we'll go to YouTube. But if we click on this and click on the cancel button, we won't go to YouTube because of the logic that we wrote for the checker function. Okay, that's cool, right? Uh, it is. Um, let me show you one other thing here. Uh, we don't just have to have these on links, right? This could be this on click can be associated with any element. So let me move this from the link to our Jumbotron, okay? And our Jumbotron um, is this big green space up here. So if anybody clicks on this big green space up here, we're gonna get, we're gonna execute the checker function and they're gonna get the pop-up and you're gonna say okay or cancel if you wanna go to YouTube, okay? It doesn't really make sense in this case, but I just wanna show you that you can put that one click um, attribute on any element in HTML. So let's refresh the page. And uh, I'm clicking on the white space down here. That's not the Jumbotron. Uh, but when I click on the green, we get that pop-up. Are you sure you wanna go to YouTube? Yes, I do. And it doesn't actually take us there for some reason. Uh, oh, that's right, because we didn't, <laughs> uh, that's because we did not, uh, we don't, this isn't an, an element where, uh, it's not a link element where the destination is set by Ahref, Ahrefs. So um, that's just a demonstration. Sorry if that was confusing, uh, but I'm just showing you that you can put the on click attribute on any element. Okay, moving along, there's one other thing that we wanna look at, and that is the prompt. Um, the prompt JavaScript uh, message pop-up. So let's go ahead and pretty much remove everything that we've done so far. And instead of, again, this was a confirm, we started with alert, now let's check out the prompt, JavaScript prompt, okay? And this is gonna allow you to collect user input. So again, just for the sake of time, I will copy this code and walk you guys through it. So between this script tag and this script tag, we have some code. This time we're gonna call prompt, what is your name, okay? And then the user's gonna have a text box where he or she can type something in and that the value of that is gonna be assigned to a name variable. So if the user is like, you know, screw you, I don't wanna type anything in, uh, that's gonna end up either being uh, an empty string or null. And in either one of those cases, we'll just say no name was provided. Otherwise, if name has a value, then we'll send an alert to the user with the value, hello, the name that they provide it. Hello, comma, the name that they provide it, and then an exclamation point. So that's defined in this text variable. Okay, so um, where should we call this? Uh, oh, this this will happen, I'm sorry, this will happen when the page loads, okay? so. Uh, let's save that. Let's refresh the page and test out the JavaScript prompt. So there we go. So we see the JavaScript prompt. There's a box for user input. What is your name? Tony. Okay, we'll click on OK. Hello, Tony, just like we expected. Uh, we can try it again. We won't provide any name this time. We'll just say OK. No name provided. So that's, the, again, that's this logic down here executing. If the name was null or the name was empty, we say no name was provided. If uh, there was a name given, then we'll say, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll say hello to that user. Okay, hopefully that should give you a good idea about the difference between prompts, confirm, and alerts in JavaScript, and a little bit of how you can use them in combination with either uh, executing when the page loads or if you, your user clicks on an element. And this is just a, a brief introduction. There's a lot more that you can do with this, but hopefully you found some value out of it. If you did, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.